All right, hey bubblers. So this is a video on what's well, it's been a long time coming and it's geared directly towards uh, people using the CSV Creator plugin, especially uh, especially the backend action um, where normally you're going to send it if you're if you're exporting bigger uh, bigger amounts of data using the plugin um, simply because there are some limitations with Bubble that. Uh, oftentimes gets attributed to the plugin action um, as the error happening there. But in these situations, um, I've never actually dug into one of these situations where the error was in the plugin action. The error is in uh, the plugin action timing out because we're trying to create too much data and, and uh, compile too much data at one time. And so it either spikes capacity really high or it um, just times out. And, and nothing really happens. We just get an error, uh, kind of generic error in the log saying there was an error with the CSV creator, you know, create uh, CSV from JSON action. So uh, what we're gonna do today is uh, actually go over how to create a download data type, how to use it. Um, it's gonna be very, very simple. Now, this process is actually very, very useful um, across across different scenarios. So different things you may want to uh, different things and, and functionality you may want to build where you need to uh, throw it in the back end, but you need to monitor and you need to see what's happening and, and all that. Uh, this can be used for that. Uh, I'm not getting that deep. So we're just going to do a very, very simple download data type to manage uh, the layering of this JSON so that so we can control uh, how it's happening. We can control um, how much capacity it's using, uh, et cetera, as we, as we create the download. Um, but anyway, let's just go ahead and jump in. I'll stop trying to explain what I'm doing and just show you uh, what we're going to do. So uh, the first thing you want to do is, so i just lay out the scenario. We're going to say uh, from this main screen here, let's just say we want to, you want the user to create, the, click this button, right? And it creates a, a CSV for them in the background. We're just going to email it. So um, we're going to say that we're, we're going to create a, a CSV of sales for them. I have a sales data type here in uh, here in this application, and we're going to create a CSV of data of, of sales, but it's too much too much to process in the browser. We need to send it to the back end to process, but it's also timing out back there. So um, let's just go ahead and get started and show what this looks like. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, let's just go ahead, jump into the data tab. And uh, we'll, we'll stay here in data types and let's create a new data type. We'll just call this download. And then we want to process a couple of things. So uh, for this download, we're actually, we're going to create JSON and we're going to create it in snippets. So we'll create little, little snippets of text and, and compile it as a list. Um, but the first thing we're going to look at is actual data that we're going to download. So let's just drop on here. Uh, Let's just say we're going to do a list of, of sales. And let's grab the sales data type. We'll create that. Now, side note, again, I'm not getting too deep. Uh, depending on how much data, um, depending on how much data you're exporting, you're not going to be able to put this on here as a list like this. So uh, you may have to, um, you may have to save you may have to say some other details as far as what's being searched and, and how to compile this data. Um, but I'm just going to assume that we've got less than, uh, you know, less than 10,000 items on this list. So we can save it uh, to a list like this. Uh, just keep that in mind. So then we'll go to, I'm going to say a list of sales and um, I broke my own rule here that should be, uh, singular, so that actually says list of sales, not list of sales is. And then let's add one more field, and we're going to say uh, list of um, processed sales. All right, I'm just naming these very uh, name these very descriptive, just so it makes uh, good sense. And so let's also we're going to add a field here called uh, list of JSON text and make that a list and we'll say this is going to be a text all right and then we're going to add one more field called final json 
And this would be just the final uh, JSON payload as a, as a text value. Okay, so you can see we're gonna add the list of sales that we want in this export here. Um, as we go through them, we're gonna take them out of that list of sales, add them to the list of process sales, and then we're going to layer uh, text into this J uh, JSON text field um, as we build it. Uh, we're gonna iterate through it, and just to back up off this one, a lot of times people think of recursive workflows as like you're, you're, you're iterating through and, and you're just processing the same thing over and over or, or maybe different records, but you're doing the same thing. But you can also take an iteration and layer, right? So you're building every time, every time you go through it, you've got one, now you've got two, three, four, five, right? And so you can, you can build out uh, JSON. It's really useful for, for this type of thing, but uh, you can build out lists. You can, you can do all kinds of things just by layering on top of each other. So, all right, so we've got our download. And let's go ahead and jump into the back end. And I've added, uh, I've added a couple API uh, endpoints here uh, beforehand, just to kind of save some time. But what we're going to say here is let's just uh, let's add a new parameter, and we're going to call this download. And it'll be a type download, and then I want to add one more. Uh, one more here and we'll just call this um, per iteration. We'll make this number. So what we want to do is we don't want to go through each sale one by one, right? We want to do is we want to, we want to pare down the amount of sales that we're processing at once into something that's manageable. And so there's not a number for this. I've, I've worked trying to fix this type of issue with, uh, with multiple uh, apps and, some of them, that number is a thousand. Some of them, it's five hundred. Some of them, it's it's five thousand. Right. So, uh, it depends a lot on uh, how much connected data that you're bringing in. Right. If you're doing searches uh, on every um, on every record to bring in connected data and and bring that into the JSON, then it just really starts bogging down, and using up capacity. So, again, we're keeping it simple. Um, this per iteration is going to be the number of items we're going to uh, process on each round. Um, I'm going to keep it very low today, actually, just so we can actually show it here on the front end when we look at that. Um, okay, so now that we have this set, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make changes uh, to a thing. And that thing is going to be the download here. And... Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the list of JSON text and we're going to add an item. All right. So the item we're going to add is we're going to get uh, this downloads um, list of sales and we're going to do items until, right? And items will until will be this per iteration. And then we're going to format that as text. So if you use CSV creator, you're recognizing this format as text. This is how we build the JSON. Um, and what we're doing is essentially whatever number we passed in that per iteration parameter. So say we pass a thousand sales through and we pass uh, 50 as the per iteration. This is saying, okay, out of this thousand, uh, out of this thousand sales, let's take the first 50 and format them. So, right. So now we're breaking this down. We're saying, okay, Let's just take 50 and we're going to do it like that. And then uh, so let's make a simple JSON here and uh, we'll grab JSON lint and say, and this is simple. You can do it in the, in the text field, um, but I find it really simple just to do it right here. I would say region, I guess if I can type. Uh, do it right here because um, JSON lint will allow you to just to validate. Move my head. Allow you to validate that JSON just to make sure it's fine. So we'll copy. It's really easy to forget uh, commas or or quotes. Um, let's just paste that here. Our delimiter would be the comma, and then so we're just going to build build out a little bit of JSON. Uh, let's grab this date. Say insert. It'll be this sales, uh, let's just say order date, and we'll format that this way. And then region, 
let's do the sales uh, region and we'll just call it name. Okay, so uh, in case you're not following along, we're taking the list of JSON text here. We're batching it. We're just taking the first uh, certain number of items from this list of sales that we need to process. And we're creating, uh, so we're just say we're taking 50 of them, right? And we're creating uh, JSON just for those first 50. And we're adding that to a list of, of JSON text. Um, on this data type. And then what we're going to do is we'll just loop, we'll just keep looping back through this list of sales to process and we're going to keep layering. So we'll come back through and we're going to add with a list of JSON text. We're going to add another, uh, another chunk of JSON. We're going to add another chunk of JSON and keep layering on top of the JSON we've already created to make this happen. All right. So let's, uh, we're still changing our download. So let's go ahead and say, um, list of process sales. We're going to add a list to it and it's going to be uh, this downloads uh, list of sales and we're going to say items until uh, per uh, iteration amount here as well. All right. And then we're going to, um, let's just change this. We'll say um, amount uh, to process, just to make this more uh, a little bit little, little more easy to understand when you're just looking at it. So uh, we can change this now. Bubble, if we can, would be able to like just change that and it automatically updates. That would be amazing. Um, but so. We're just getting the number of items that we've processed and turned into a, a little chunk of JSON here. And then we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to grab list of sales, right? And then we're going to remove a list. And so let's just copy this expression and we're going to drop it right here. This list of set, this downloads list of sales items until we're going to remove this from the list of sales that we added that needed to be processed. So every time this goes through uh, the iteration, we're going to take the first chunk of sales. We're going to create JSON with it, add that to the download. We're going to take that same, those same sales and we're going to add them to the uh, list of process sales. And then we're going to take those same amount of sales and we're going to remove them from the list of sales to process. All right. And so now we will go ahead and say, uh, let's reschedule. So we'll do a schedule API workflow and we're going to reschedule. Um, what does this say? No, it's not going to let me do that. Uh, I'll fix that. Um, all right. So we're going to reschedule uh, this layer JSON step one here, schedule date. We'll just say uh, current time. And, you know, then here, I would make this, you know, test, test with your app, like see, see what this delay needs to be for it to, uh, to iterate properly. Um, but we'll say, uh, plus seconds one for now, we're not going to make this, uh, a big deal. And then we'll just get the result of step uh, one there and amount of to process. We'll, we'll just keep that. We'll pull that from the amount that was passed through. So, and then let's just say this. Uh, we'll give it a condition. It will say when result of steps list of sales count is greater than zero. All right, so that will reschedule this as long as the changes we made here in step one results in there still being more sales to process. That will reschedule this flow. Otherwise, we're going to move it on over here to this create uh, CSV flow, which would be you know where you're going to. Uh, create your CSV and, and run that CSV action from the CSV creator. And so we're just going to add a new parameter. We'll just make this download. And this would be of type download. So I'm just going to copy and paste this over. Uh, and let's rename this 
so we'll say uh, reschedule um, this flow. And then let's name this one schedule step two. Okay, perfect. Now API workflow uh, is gonna be to create CSV and our download will be the result of, of step one. And then our condition will be only when uh, result of step one is zero, count is zero. All right, um, perfect. That should do what we need it to do. And then in this step, uh, we'll go ahead and compile this list of JSON text into a single JSON uh, text that can be passed directly into that plugin action. So here we're gonna make changes to thing again. Thing we're gonna change is the download. Now this could be done in the file. You could you could do this part directly in the in the plugin action if you wanted. Um, I'm not actually creating a CSV today, so I'm gonna show you how to do it here. And this would be, we're gonna set our final JSON and uh, we will set it to this downloads list of JSON text. And then um, let's uh, see, it's join with a comma. Okay, so we've created a bunch of valid JSON here. And now we're going to take it and uh, we're going to we're going to join it with a comma so that each section is joined uh, is put into a solid JSON text that is separated by a comma, which each other object is is separated as well because we've built that um, into the list. So all right, that's good and good to go there, I think. So let me just jump over here and make sure we can run this. Okay, so we should be able to run this. So I'm gonna jump back into uh, the front end here and we're gonna set this up. So we'll do uh, create JSON and we'll do a start edit workflow. And uh, first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a new thing and that will be uh, of this download. So let's go ahead and say at all fields, we can turn off uh, final JSON, we can turn off the list of JSON text. And in fact, we can turn off the list of process text. All we need here is a uh, list of sales. And we're gonna set the list here. I'm gonna do a search for sales. Uh, this would probably normally be a search you've already done or you know, pulling data from a repeating group. Uh, I'm just gonna do a search for sales here. Let's see, the search for sales. I'm actually not gonna put any constraints on there. I'm just gonna say uh, items until 10. We're gonna keep this very, uh, very small. So we can process it. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and schedule that uh, API workflow. That would be uh, layer JSON. Let's make it uh, current date time. Download will be uh, result of step one here. And then amount to process, let's just do two at a time. So we will schedule that, uh, we'll create it, we'll schedule it. And then I'm actually gonna show this here um, in the JSON that's generated. So uh, I'm gonna make this group of type uh, download, we'll click that and No, I don't have to set this data source. I don't have a data source. I have to set this from the from the action. Okay, so we'll jump back over here now and let's just display this uh, data into that group. So we're gonna display it into the download group and the data to display will be a result of step one's download, All right? And then uh, here in our text, let's just say this is parent groups downloads. Um, Well, let's do uh, let's do list of JSON text first, and let's um, no, we'll leave it just like that. That's perfect. Okay, let's give this a preview and see if it works. No, not all my usernames and passwords are one and two. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll create JSON, we've scheduled it. All right, so now we can see it being created 
is looping through. So there's a second in between, and we have generated all this JSON. So technically, this text here is actually going to be valid, uh, valid JSON as it is. So if we jump over here into, um, we would need to put it inside brackets, right? Because that's going to make it an array. So we have that array of objects. Let's move him over here. And if we hit valid JSON. All right, so what happened here? We have uh, we have a space in here. So um, this is this is good real time testing. So uh, this is again uh, as you're doing when you're building uh, JSON structures here in the uh, in Bubble. You want to keep in mind when something may be uh, when something's going to be like a user generated text or when it may contain uh, contain characters that will break a JSON object, such as uh, a line break, a uh, a quote. Um, there's different characters that will that will break JSON. So this uh, we'll just say region. The region name is one of those that's likely a uh, and by the way, we're pulling this data from, from a connected data type, right? It's just so simple. Um, but a, a name of, of a region like this is likely going to be entered by a user. And, you know, because of that, there's not much you can do to control, um, to control what they put in. You know, they could, they could put characters that you don't want. So uh, I would just put format as JSON safe right there. And that will go ahead and strip out um, strip out any of those characters, as well as uh, you can take the the quotes that are off from each side because it will add the quotes onto that value. And we'll jump back over here. And in fact, let's look at our um, database. So we can see we have a uh, a download list of sales is empty. List of sales that was processed. Is is here? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's the nut, that's the amount we set. And then here's our list of JSON text. And then here is our final JSON. So uh, everything's working as expected. And let's just run this again. I'll keep this uh, showing the list of JSON text, so we can watch it be generated again. One second between each. All right, so um, copy that. We'll go back over here, just paste the new in. So you can see here, right, uh, this Sub-Saharan Africa region obviously had a line break in it, so um, it's been corrected uh, to be a valid JSON. We have validate JSON, and we have uh, a full array of valid JSON here. So uh, that will work. And now we can see, so we, this is not completely refreshed. List of sales is partially processed. List of processed sales is partially uh, filled out. If we refresh the data, again, we have a completed uh, download type. And so you can see like, this gives you so much control over the downloads, right? You can you could add all kinds of functionality. You could pause it, start it, um, do anything like that, but, um, you know, if I was creating a CSV, I would I would then attach the CSV to this to this download, right? And then this download would be attached to the company or the user, so you can show downloads that are that have been created. You can have a whole list of like, you know, here's all the downloads you've created. You know, they can um, rather than re-exporting a new download, they can just uh, you know grab the file from that download when they first generated it if they want to. Um, okay, so let's do one more. And this time, uh, instead of using the list of JSON text, we're going to say final JSON and process this again. Now you'll notice we're not going to see this. We're not going to see anything until all the, all the JSON is completely generated. So it's create JSON. It's being generated right now, and it should show up about now. Here, there, perfect. And we're just going to copy this. You can see, so we have one, two objects, and it's separated with a comma, just like we need it. 
let's just clear this out. The square brackets validated perfect. And so now we have JSON that would validate uh, perfectly. It would export perfectly, but we're building it. We're layering it, right? We're going piece. Uh, we're iterating through it at a, at a set amount. So it doesn't matter um, really how many we send to the back. Um, Let's create a new one. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just gonna do one more, just just for the heck of it. We'll do a hundred of them, and then let's set our iteration to be twenty five. A we'll refresh. This really probably shouldn't take uh, much longer than what we were currently doing. But we'll let it work. But you can see, like, we're just going through, and each each time we pass through, and we go through, and we pass a new chunk of. Uh, or we create a new chunk of, of JSON. It's just layering on top of what we've done previously. So um, here we go. So we have a hundred of them. And let's see if I can copy them on here. I should have put this into a, like a multi-line input so I could just click. But that's all right. Wait, where did my, there we go. Okay. Let's control C, copy that. We'll clear this out again, square brackets, paste that, validate it, perfect. And now we'll, there we have 100, uh, 100 objects rather than uh, just 10. So I'm going to stop right there. Hopefully that helps uh, helps you when, when setting this up for the CSV creator. Um, if you run into timeout issues, uh, this is, I mean, honestly, the, the download object is is probably something that's important even if you're even if you're uh, creating smaller smaller exports just a way of managing what you've exported and where those files are etc but uh, hopefully this helps with um, with some of the issues uh, people have been having as far as as far as timeouts and having to create that JSON just create that JSON in in a back-end workflow you know iterate through until it, the JSON's created and then send it to the actual uh, create action uh, from the plugin and that, you know, you shouldn't have any troubles from there. So cheers guys.